In demo number two, we're going to add text and numbers, create some column width changes, and use a technique for creating a sequence called filling in. So I'm going to add some text here up in A1. Remember our cells have identifiers by column and rows, so in A1, I'm going to create a gradebook here. Notice what I'm typing is appearing up here in the formula bar. So I hit the enter to secure that information to that cell. Also notice that when I typed it overlapped into the next cell, B1. Now it's not part of B1, it's just kind of covering up B1 and we'll discuss that a little bit later. Let's go down to A3 and we'll call this fall and then I'm going to add more information before I move on. So I've added some more information and notice these column titles I created in row 5 student name when I first typed it it overlapped just like CIS 120L gradebook overlap but the minute I put something in B5 this word 1 it doesn't show anymore. It covers up that portion that overlap because something is in B5. It's not transparent anymore. So we will work at adding more data to this sheet. One of the things I wanted to tell you is even though words can overlap into the next cell, numbers cannot. Numbers have to completely show in a cell or you will get what I refer to as railroad tracks and actually we'll see those a little bit later. So text can overlap into the neighboring cell, numbers cannot. But just remember for text if something's put into the neighboring cell then what you typed doesn't completely show. And that's where we get into needing to change the width of the columns. But I'm going to add some more data here and I'll be right back. So all of the new names I've typed in all overlap into the next cell. We'll see how that affects our sheet later on. So let's do a little catching up here on adding scores for our students. And um, notice the difference here as I add. I'm going to start in this column. Notice what you see about the alignment. Words by default align to the left. Numbers by default align to the right. I will finish adding my numbers here and we'll be right back again. So I finished adding my numbers, the scores, and using the keypad I wasn't really looking up much and I look up and see that Fred has a score of 600. Well that's not quite right. So correct it at the formula bar means I use my cursor up there, add numbers, correct it at the cell means I just retype the number that's supposed to be in the cell. Well it came to my attention I left out four of the scores here so let's take some time to widen column A so that when I type in these four scores I won't be covering up the names. So now I'm going to change the width of column A. I go up between A and B and there's a separator and when I put my cursor over it I get a double headed arrow which allows me to change the width. Notice box appears telling me the width. The first number in that box is identifying character width. Okay, so at 9.86 and so on and so forth as I move it to the right. The second number in parentheses is what's referred to as pixels and there are 72 pixels in an inch. So it's just another way of identifying a length, particularly when you're dealing with text is in pixels. So if I stop right now I'd be at 106 pixels. Another way of changing the column is to be in that column 
just identify some cell in that column, go to Format over here on the ribbon, and change the column width. What pops up is the number, and the number is character width, not pixels. So you got to get used to the difference between character width and pixels. Just hit OK on that. Another way of changing it is by double clicking on that separator and it will automatically widen the column for the widest object in the column. So if I double click, I just did, notice CIS 120L gradebook was the widest so it made room for that. So three ways of changing column widths. You can use it manually, click and drag the separator between the columns. You can use format column width, but remember that's in character width. Or you can double click to fill it out to the largest item in the column. So just remember those particular things. Now when I type in my missing numbers, they're not overlapping and covering up the names in column A. So now I'm going to enter up here in B4 the weeks that each of these assignments are due. So I'm going to go week 1. Hit the enter key to secure it. Go back to that cell and in the very bottom right hand corner we have what is referred to as the fill handle. There's enough intelligence in Excel that when I click on the fill handle, notice it becomes a crosshair, and I move in a particular direction, it automatically recognizes, hey, this is a sequence. So it is filling in the sequence for me. I don't have to type the remaining four weeks. It automatically does it for me. And you'll notice that it previewed as we moved and also we get this box right here the auto fill options pull down which basically says oh, I didn't really mean to do that I wanted week one all the way across so that would be copy cell I wanted the fill series which is what it did for me that's the default or I wanted to fill the formatting only or fill without the formatting if I had B before formatted so the fill series is what I want to keep. And so we've looked at adding text, adding numbers, changing column widths, and even a quick look at creating a sequence. We'll do more of all of those in another demo.